Hey, welcome to the channel. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to restore the flexibility of your hip flexors. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. And it does not get much better than that. So take advantage of it. Ready? Let's go ahead and dive into this one. All right, like I said, today we're gonna to be showing you how to restore flexibility of your hip flexors that feel stiff, tight, and restricted. But the first key to understand with this whole process is that your hip flexors are spanning a wide range from your lower thoracic spinal column, upper lumbar spine, down into your hip and even across your knee. So the hip flexors actually span a pretty big section of our body, which includes largely our lumbopelvic range, okay, and our hips in that. So even having tight hip flexors can be affecting our low back, it can be affecting our knee. And that is very important to understand that our pelvic positioning and the range of motion that we have from our hips largely will influence our ability to open up the flexibility and range of motion that we'll have from our hip flexors, okay? If you understand that, that's a big start right there. One of the biggest things that we'll be looking at is restoring the balance of your ability to use your gluteal muscles and activate your gluteals to stabilize your pelvis better so that we can open up more range of motion from the hip flexors, allowing them to move more freely instead of acting as a stabilizing muscle more so in your pelvis because of the daily activities that we do. A lot of sitting, driving, any of that stuff where we're in that shortened hip position can be a big factor. Ready? Let's go ahead and start looking at some of these exercises. All right, the very first thing we wanna address is any anterior pelvic tilt or limitation in hip extension. So what we're gonna do is use a band here and step back into full extension of the hip and have both legs fully planted and extended. The pelvis needs to be neutral, so I'm focusing on my glutes and my abs, neutralizing the pelvic positioning. Uh, thinking of tucking my tailbone under and flexing the glutes. Here I can add a big stretch by reaching up and over to the opposite side of the leg that's back. The band is helping keep my pelvis in that neutral position and I can focus on flexing and releasing the glutes as I work here. I can also go into different lunges while I'm in this position. This is a great way to restore your lunge. We're working again all the range of the hip flexors from the lumbar spine, the back of the ribs there, all the way into the knee. So you'll see after a few lunges here, I'll also pull the leg back into a deep stretch because the quadricep rectus femoris is also a hip flexor. So we wanna make sure that we're hitting that at the same time. So everything here is about hip extension and pelvic control and positioning. Next, we'll wanna address any sliding surface dysfunction of the soft tissues in that area. So right there where I'm pointing on my abdomen obliques is a very important area where the psoas runs. And here I'm using a kettlebell handle to get into the psoas as I place the hip in extension and curl the leg back behind me. Once again, this is one of the major ranges of motion that we want to be restoring. I'm using the handle to tack down the soft tissues around the psoas there and floss it as I extend my hip toward the ceiling. Now this can also be done with a softball as well, a fast pitch softball is another way that you can do it if the kettlebell isn't quite an option for you. Now this is going to help point out any restrictions in your psoas and it 
shouldn't surprise you if you feel something sharp and almost pinching pulling into your hip or groin. That's a very common feeling when your hip flexors are restricted in this way. Continuing to work those soft tissues, the couch stretch is one of my favorite positions to open up the hip flexors. Pin the leg in the corner of the room, get the other leg out front with the hands in line, and work on restoring basically the muscle function here, the balance of the musculature. So you'll see me driving my glutes into a tight flex for five seconds at a time and releasing in this position. I'm also gonna go into a level three position, getting up as high as possible. Again, focusing on neutral pelvis and making the extension occur from my hip by engaging the gluteals. Again, it's about restoring the balance of the function of your gluteals to the hip flexors, which have been overdoing it. They've been working harder than they need to, and it's time for your glutes to take some of that back. So after this position, we're gonna get into internal and external rotation of the hip as well. As I mentioned, the hip flexors are multi-functional uh, of the range here. So the external rotator and internal rotator TFL muscle is actually also a hip flexor. Um, so this is a position that can help us restore that TFL and get back to natural balance and strength at that internal rotation. Now, if you can't lift the leg actively from this position, you can do it passively and then try and hold the position. Or you can just start by sitting in this 90-90 position to begin with and getting comfortable in that. Once you do a few of those uh, internal rotations with the hip in extension there, you're gonna fully extend the leg back behind you into a pigeon position. Now, if you can't go from the floor in this position, it can help to do it off of a bench, a couch, something that's elevated, but putting the front leg up and then getting into this position and taking some of the pressure off in the beginning. As you get better at restoring internal rotation in extension from this back leg and creating stability around the pelvis and full extension of the hip, you'll find that your hip flexors are more likely to open up more and more and get more comfortable in a position like this. The last piece of the puzzle is strengthening our functional movement patterns. So what I like to focus on are hinges, squats, and lunges essentially. But our goal here is to feel the stabilization coming from the glutes around the pelvis as much as possible. This first one is an example of a hinge, a glute bridge where I'm trying to reach full extension and focusing on the tension in the glutes in the top position. So my hips are driving high and my knees are driving wide as I drive my feet directly down through the floor. A lot of times if you are imbalanced here, you'll feel your quadriceps doing more work or you'll feel your hamstrings trying to do more work. Both of those are wrong and functionally you are not working correctly. That means we need to restore the glutes to their full potential to gain strength and stabilize the pelvis in this position. Once you've done about 10 reps here, you should feel pretty lit up in those glutes and it should let you know exactly what you did right then. All right, our next exercise is a great test of your ability to stabilize in the supinated position here. So what I need to feel is my hip flexors pulling the knees toward the elbows when I'm bringing everything in, keeping the abdomen engaged so the pelvis stays in a neutral position. 
And when I extend out, I need to feel my gluteals and quadriceps engaging to straighten the leg. I should not feel my pelvis change positioning at all. I should not feel my shoulders change positioning at all. So this is a good test of my core stability to go into full extension. If this is easy, you can always add resistance bands around the legs to challenge the hip flexion a little bit more or even a weight in the hands to make it a little bit more difficult. As I mentioned, I like to also test this in the squat itself. The squat is important because we're pulling ourselves down into the bottom position using our hip flexors. So that's where it's important to actually have strong hip flexors and to be able to pull into deep hip flexion. As we extend the legs, driving the knees wide and the hips forward, that is a test of our ability to fully stabilize the pelvis using the glutes coming back into the tall standing position. So you can see that the hip flexors are pulling me down in the bottom, still using the gluteals as the knees drive wide for stability, but also as I extend, continuing to drive the knees wide and adding that hip extension to bring my pelvis back into a neutral position and good alignment. And lastly, the lunge. This is a big one because we get to test our positional awareness of the pelvis from this extended leg and really challenge the hip extension, which if you're lacking hip extension, your lunges will be challenged. But they are also one of the best ways to open up your hip extension and get those hip flexors to release back to their natural length. All right, and there you have it. Three steps. First, restore the positioning of your pelvis and the range of motion of your hip. Two, work on the soft tissues themselves, actually address any restrictions, restore the muscle dynamics and the balance and stability around the pelvis and hip. Step three, make sure that we understand how to movement pattern correctly. Two, engage the gluteals more to stabilize the pelvis and keep the hip flexors at their natural length that they should be. You get those three steps down, you're good to go. If you like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below. And take a moment to share this one with a friend who does a lot of sitting throughout the day. They have tight hip flexors if they do. No doubt about it. Okay, so share it their way. Make sure they get the information they need to help open up those hip flexors and keep themselves from ending up in pain. If you are a dad who wants to improve his mobility in the next 90 days, who struggles with flexibility issues, whether that be hip flexors, hamstrings, or if you have general stiffness from your training program, training aches or previous injuries that are keeping you from lifting at your strongest, and you wanna get back to hitting the weights in the way that you truly desire, then what I need to do is drop down below in the description here, fill out the coaching application, and I'll get in contact with you so we can get you heading in the right direction with that. So again, if you have training aches and pains, injuries previous from this, or you're just stiff and restricted in your movement and you wanna open up more mobility, drop down in the description and we will get you to the point where that is no longer hindering your performance in the gym and in your life. Last but not least, if you have not already, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym 
and outside of it in your daily life and routine, and it does not get better than that. Welcome to the Stronghold Army. Catch you next week.